My name is Kim Binstead and I'm a professor in the Information and Computer Sciences Department at uh, the University of Hawaii at Manoa. I'm also the principal investigator on the High Seas Project. Uh, my undergraduate uh, is in physics from McGill and then I went and got my PhD in artificial intelligence at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, then I went uh, and worked with Sony in Japan at their research labs and uh, so I decided to get back into academia here in Hawaii. Um, somewhat ironically, because my PhD was in artificial intelligence and my undergrad was in physics, I'm a computer science professor who's never actually taken a computer science course as such. So when I came to the University of Hawaii, I started uh, working with the um, Astrobiology Institute here, and I, which I was a co-investigator in. And it's a wonderfully interdisciplinary field, and I would go to these seminars and I would understand you know, a quarter of it, maybe. Uh, and in particular, I found I was missing the geology. So I started taking geology courses. And uh, after a while, I realized I was halfway to a master's in geology. And I thought, all right, well, might as well finish it. So 15 years after I got my PhD, I got a, uh, a master's in planetary geology. I'm really proud of that. I really, I really enjoy the UH environment. Uh, it's, it's unique because of, of the islands and because of uh, uh, you know, the unique character of the state. Um, and it's also a very friendly campus. Um, we're both competitive in the world, but also not cutthroat, if you see what I mean, uh, which is a really nice balance as far as I'm concerned. I've always been interested in space research. Uh, and then in 2007, I participated in a simulation similar to high seas, but up in the Canadian high Arctic on an island full of polar bears. Um, and that experience was really formative. It really made me realize the, the huge amount of information of science we can get out of these kinds of simulations. And uh, that's really what led me to proposing the High Seas Project uh, uh, here in Hawaii. Uh, it, really is, it really is the perfect, perfect place for it. And uh, um, I managed to convince NASA that that was true. HiSE stands for Hawaii Space Exploration Analog and Simulation, and it is a NASA-funded study uh, where we put a group of people in an isolated environment in, on the slopes of Mauna Loa and study them over these long-duration simulations of a, a Mars exploration mission. So what we're trying to do for NASA is to help them understand how to put together a crew for long-duration space exploration and how to support that crew. And it really is the same questions that uh, a Polynesian voyaging leader would have to make. Uh, who do you want on your team? Who do you want on your crew? Um, what do you have to bring with you so that you can settle in a new place? And how do you have to work together as a team to actually complete the voyage? It really is exactly the same questions. We've had two four-month missions uh, at the Habitat, one eight-month mission, and the current crew is in the middle of a 12-month mission. Um, NASA has found the data we've been giving them so valuable that they decided to fund it for another three years, so that'll be three more eight-month missions. So our goal with the High Seas Project is to remove or reduce some of the barriers to long-duration space exploration, ultimately to, for a mission to Mars. So the site here in Hawaii is perfect for a number of reasons. One is that visually and geologically it's very, very similar to Mars. Uh, Mauna Loa is a shield volcano, so is Olympus Mons, and uh, they're very similar. Um, also, the site itself is visually very isolated. When you look out from the HAB, you don't see any uh, human activity, you don't see any plant life, you don't see any animal life, except for the occasional spider. Um, so again, very Mars-like. But also, there's the fact that at, at this altitude on Mauna Loa, about 8,000 feet, um, there's very little temperature variation over the year. And that means that it's ideally suited to doing these very long duration studies, which are hard to do at places like the South Pole, which is um, um, obviously very remote, but also extremely challenging logistically. So it really is a, a perfect spot for this kind of study. The habitat uh, is tiny. It's a 36 foot in diameter dome, and it really is a fancy tent at some level. Uh, the site that it's at is a disused quarry, so we didn't have to move a single rock to just put the dome in place. And when the project is finished, we'll take it away and it'll be exactly as it was before we got there. Um, the dome is, of course, completely off the grid. It uses solar power. Yeah, we're doing our best to uh, leave as small a footprint behind as possible.
Uh, a Mars mission, of course, uh, is about space exploration, but it's also about sustainability. Um, a Mars habitat inherently has to be sustainable because you can't um, you can't just go out for more um, fuel or oxygen or food. Uh, so I really do think the lessons that we're learning uh, at the High Seas Habitat can be applied here on Earth as well. So it's really exciting. It's a, a wonderful opportunity to uh, advance uh, humanity's journey into space.